These Vancouver entrepreneurs will need some luck as well because they're coming to the den with what's traditionally been a tough sell, gourmet sauce. Come closer, come closer. Closer? Don't be scared. That's perfect. Perfect. Right there, right, right there. there. Oh, now back two feet. Perfect. Hello, dragons. My name is Marsha Simons, and I'm the founder of Sister Secret Gourmet Foods. This is my business partner, Sally Pateman. Joanna Spady is Sally's sister. And what are you looking for? We're looking for a $175,000 investment for 30% of our business. What we'd like to do is have you taste the products. Our mantra is, when they try it, they buy it. The other day, somebody asked me about the show, and they said, what are the products that you absolutely go, we should never see any more of those? And you know what I said? Sauces. To see okay. what else yeah, they have. The, uh, I, I think you may change your mind. What, what is the product? It's called the Fragrant Chili. It's a sauce. It's, it's not only a sauce. It has applications as a cooking oil. It's a multi-purpose sauce used as a condiment, spread, spice, and marinade. They're hedging their success on this recipe. Great product. Thank you. They also sell granola and scones, but they're hoping the fragrant chili sauce will be their big retail hit. That's nice. But what's the sales of just the sauce? Um, probably about 35% of our sales. Last year, our sales were around $100,000. That's $35,000? Yes. That's a very small amount of money in the food industry. So I'm asking myself, is your sauce ever going to make a million in sales? You know what I say? Not a chance in hell. We're going to use part of the money of the investment when you give it to us to support marketing and in-store tasting. So you're going to market your way to success in the food industry. You are absolute insignificant worms in that industry. We want to add more stores of two chains, namely Sobeys and um, IGA. IGA, in which we already have listings. Bingo, they just hit it, listing fees. Here's how it works. I'm the buyer, I'm like a crack dealer, like a heroin dealer. I hook you with a little bit in two stores, show you the sell through, then you come in and I hit you with the full vein, listing fees. I suck every dollar of profit out of your line I take your clothing, your children, your car, your mortgage, and you make no money until you have enough scale to push back. That's how the food industry works. I used to be in it on the other side. I would eat guys like you for lunch. One area of Whole Foods is 300 stores. Once you pay the one listing fee, no, you're in that No, not one listing fee. I will figure out how to suck every dime out of you. And then one day when you have no clothing, you come here and say, give me some burlap to sit in because I'm wiped out. I didn't listen to you. This is really bad. This is a really bad idea, I'm out. What else have you got? This product here, which we just came out with, our commercial size product, is where we're gonna make money. What is that product? This is the fragrant chili, Lowest but in a large size. People can use it in restaurants. Sally actually uses the product in her restaurant, serves it with her yam fries. Mush, let me talk. If each Boston pizza went through one case a week, we would profit just from Boston pizza $200,000 next year. You just talked about how you could make money in the commercial business. Why don't you focus there? I don't... Because we've much. just realized that that should be our focus. Okay. We just figured it out. So why do we just spend all this time talking about right. all these other retailers if all you're gonna do is sell commercial. Why do we even have a conversation? We still want, we still want to continue the retail line. For, Why? For... Do you think that's, that it would be better to j strictly focus and not build the brand? Marcia, I wouldn't even go after the retail. Exactly. Like, like, you're using the shotgun approach to the marketplace and you should be using the single focus. Right. Marcia, I don't get you. I mean, I just, I, that was very, very confusing. You have to she focus on one thing. She's trying to go all over the map. I'm out. Bad, bad presentation, you guys. I'm out. My only issue is the valuation. I buy the idea of potential. I'm just not willing to put a lot of money on it right now. So I'm out.
Okay, Jim, over to you. Yeah, I know. Jim, I figure in everything on the menu, there's an application and use as a condiment in, in the restaurants. We put it on everything. This would be good on your chili things that you do. Joanne, how much flexibility is in an evaluation given that the one you came in with makes absolutely no sense at all? Please accept our apologies. We literally came up with this concept of the commercial last night. So here's what's happened here. We've actually told you what your business plan should be. I think Correct? we came to that realization without wanting to let go of the retail. Right, so I think you should go back and talk about it and rethink your entire valuation and then come back and talk to us again. Okay. For the first time in Den history, entrepreneurs are being given a chance to redo their pitch. They're dumping the retail idea and will pitch a commercial version directly to Jim Treliving. Jim, how much of this stuff do you use? And we buy sauces by the ton. And if Jim wants to put the sauce on his menus, he knows now's the time to buy. Morning. Hi, Dad. They've asked us to think about our valuation. Yes. We're trying to figure out a fair number. Well, you've got those numbers with you, haven't you? No. Okay, so you're going to have to take a guess at it. So will a new pitch get them a deal? Have we ever heard of a sauce that came here and went out and made never, money? Never. Their last hope is Jim Treliving, the dance franchise food king and the only dragon left standing. What we'd like to do is focus on what's working. There's a thought. And we would like $50,000 for 25%. I'll make you an offer, $50,000 for 50%. And I want to test that sauce with our guys. Marsha, you have an offer? Um, I would like- You need to talk about that, you two. Oh, wait. Excuse me. In my mind, I was thinking, even though I'm out, if you refuse that offer, I'm gonna hose you down and hit you all with electric cattle prods. <laughs> because this is a one-time opportunity for sauce girls to get an investor that can actually get you distribution. And distribution, yes. Right. And so we recognize it that. would be sheer stupidity not to take that deal. What I'd like to do is 40% and throw my incredible selling abilities in. <laughs> <laughs> you were holding those back? Jim, what are you going to do? Marsha. I can't go with the 40%. And I'll tell you why. we got to have some control of what we're doing with that. So uh. for that reason, I'm out. Ride Thank that you. sauce into the sunset. Arlene, you worked so hard to help those I ladies. I tried. I did everything you I could. Did. I did everything I could. We couldn't let go of, we, the, of, of the original, of, our, of, of the but original now, concept. We know. Now we know. We know, we know what's going to make it's, us money. It's all good.